demo, I'd like to discuss the import ability of the 1095C. These same steps can apply to the 1095B and the 1094C when they become available in December of 2015. Once you've installed the early desktop and open the application, you'll click on the import data and you'll select either import via Excel or import via CSV. First thing you'll want to do is to download the import template and instructions and you'll want to select the hyperlink uh, to, the, to the form type that you'd like. It'll ask you where you want to save your file and uh, the instructions will come either on the second tab of the Excel file or in a PDF format. Please review those to make uh, the most efficient import process of, uh, available. And so let's discuss the import file at first. It's broken up into the different sections of the form. The first section in blue is the employer's information. And any column headings in red are required for the import. And then the gray column headings are not required for importing data. We did want to accommodate employers that only have some of the data or all of the data for 1085 forms. And the column headings here are all of the applicable columns that you could import into the software. If you see a gray column heading that you don't need, go ahead and delete that column heading. Another important comment for the import uh, file or template itself is you can import more than one company, uh, depending on how you want to, to do all the importing of the data. And uh, one row equals one form. So all of the data on row two is equivalent to one employee's 1095C form. So you've got your employer information first, followed by the employee information. And then finally, you get to the actual lines 14 through 16, where you have your offer of coverage in line 14, followed by the lowest employee share of line 15, and then file following is the safe harbor codes. And uh, each of those different sections have an all 12 months column and then each individual month uh, if applicable as well. And then that section is followed by the covered individual information. And we, we can accommodate up to 25 covered individuals per employee if, if needed. So um, any check boxes that you see, you'll use true to check the box or the number one to also check the box. If you do not want the box checked, then you can either leave it blank or a zero or false would also leave that uh, unchecked as well. So for uh, businesses that do not have, let's say, the payroll information um, that, that you need, then, uh, then you could just import that subset of information. And uh, the column heading is the key, is the critical component of all of this, as that will map to the appropriate field on the actual 1095C form. So once you've merged all of your data onto our template, you would save it into a directory that, that you'd like, and then go back into the yearly desktop application, hit import data, import via CSV or Excel, and then select the radio button next to the form type you want to import. It'll ask you where your file is located. Once you select that, we'll run a list of validations against it in the background. And we are looking at the IRS specifications and we'll identify any issues with your file that uh, may be present. We have two types of errors on that audit page. And the first type is a critical error, and these are just bad data. And so two examples of that would be uh, if you have an invalid phone number, for example, we're going to show you that that's invalid. We're going to give you the incorrect value along with the location in your file so you can easily go back and fix the errors. If you have any of these critical errors present in your file, you will not be able to import. So the only option is to print the page or hit cancel and have to go back, fix it, and then try the import again. Now, we do have missing data as another section of, uh, of errors. And this would be indicative of 
I only have, you know, let's say benefit information and I don't have the, the payroll information needed. And so we've identified any required fields for filing. So um, in this area, we're going to show you the first time we notice a specific error message. The example that's given here is uh, you had checked the self-insured or Part 3 checkbox and um, you didn't include any covered individual information. And so this is information that you'll need to just data key into the software. And uh, that way, once you key it into the, the application, you'll be able to file. Now, you'll, we highly recommend you print this page so that you'll be able to know what you need to do for each individual payer uh, or employer information. Once the data is in the application, so after you've got a clean data set or you know, at least a clean data set that um, just has missing data included, the imported information will show up in your payer list and your recipient list. And so if you accidentally or inadvertently imported really bad data, you could just come back in here, select the employer that you want to delete altogether, and that will delete the payer information, the employee information, and the actual form so that you can try the import again. Uh, so that's very easy if you import bad data to fix that and delete the information out of the software. One other resource I wanted to mention is on our knowledge base, which is located online at yearlydesktop.greatland.com and select the knowledge base. And a reference that I would uh, recommend is looking at the character limits for each field on the 1095C. And you'll be able to um, find by every single field how many characters the IRS allows. If your uh, data exceeds that character limit, then you will get a critical error and you'll have to go back and fix it. So. Uh, that's how you import data into the yearly desktop application. And thank you for your time.